Hello, everybody. This is Shannon with Beads and Babble, back with part two of the No Solder Cold Connections Bangle tutorial. I am going to start off listing what tools I'm going to be using. And as you can see, this is a more advanced tutorial uh, about cold connections. So not as beginner friendly, but not to say that you can't study this tutorial and learn through practice how to do each and every one of these techniques. So we're going to, of course, need some wire. I'm going to be using some copper wire today, uh, mostly a 14 gauge copper wire and possibly some 16 gauge. We're also going to need a variety of head pins and ball um, head pins, whatever color finishes you'd like. Um, so a variety of large hole metal beads and some maybe some bead soup. Um, whatever beads that will fit um, or accommodate the wire that we're using today, the 16 and 14 gauge wire. Also, um, some a variety of jump rings will come in handy. These were all made by me, which I will be doing a tutorial on how to make different jump rings as well. They're the glue that holds our jewelry together, so they're very important, and it's nice to be able to make them on demand. We'll need a steel bench block, a file, or emery board, a measuring device, a nylon mallet, a chasing hammer, flush cutters, a hole punch of some sort. They make different ones. This is just the one I use. Um, they have different varieties. This is a 1.2 millimeter. This is a six step bell or loop making plier. If I was to recommend a tool for jewelry makers um, beginning, this would be one that I would highly recommend. Lots of uses. Chain nose, bent nose pliers. And if you have them, some vinyl jaw pliers, they come in handy. Not necessary, but they do come in handy. You will also need a mandrel of some sort, whether it is wood or steel, one of these. Or you can use um, a wine bottle, a shampoo bottle, something in the right uh, diameter, um, around diameter, so you can form the bangles. Okay, the first bangle we're going to do today is going to be a very simple one. I'm going to show you the example. This is the cold connection that we are going to do. It is simply a 14 gauge wire with a ball head pin uh, that is securing the bangle together. So we're going to start out with cutting the correct size um, for the bangle for your wrist. I'm going to make a flush cut here at this end. And then I'm going to stretch the wire out and I'm going to cut it to where I like my bangles, which is eight and a quarter. And then I'm going to straighten it out using the uh, mallet and bench block technique. You don't have to hit very hard and you're just twisting the wire as you're hammering it flat. It'll straighten the wire pretty quickly. And I'll turn it so I can get this in. You always want to start out with a relatively straight piece of metal. Uh, keeping the bench, um, bench block here, I am going to paddle out both ends. And I want both ends to be uh, the paddle facing the same way on both. So pay attention to that when we're doing that. We're going to paddle out the metal so it's thin, so we can, uh, thinner, so we can uh, punch, use that hole punch 
to punch through it. So I'm going to paddle out about a half inch paddle. Using the chasing hammer. Watching the way the metal's moving as I'm doing this. And then I'll usually just feel it. Feels pretty good. And then I'm going to hold it so the paddle is flat on that side. And I'm going to mirror the paddle on the opposite side here with the chasing hammer. Feels pretty good. I'm going to bring in the file now and I am going to round out these ends and I'm going to take off the burrs or any kind of sharp bits that are on either end. You don't want them present when you're wearing them. It's sharp things and skin, not a good combination. This doesn't take too long at all. And I'm doing this step now because it's just easier. Those burrs off. All right. Now I'm going to bring in the hole punch, hole punching pliers, and I'm going to put a hole in each in making sure not to get too close to either edge of this metal. Before I punch through the metal with the pliers here. And then I'm going to turn this and do the other end. And take your time with this step because you do not want to get that hole so close to the edge that the metal, the cold connection won't be secure. So, and there's the other hole. Now I'm just bringing the bench block in and the chasing hammer to tap down um, each little hole section because it gets rid of the burr and flattens out any kind of warping that the plier did while we were punching through the metal with tip. Okay. Now I'm just going to bring in the mandrel. I'm going to use this one because it's a little bit easier to um, use while I'm filming because it's not as tall as my metal one. So you're just going to use your fingers. One side of the paddled in, you're just going to hold it and you're going to bend that wire using your fingers around the mandrel to get that bangle shape. And you'll want to cross them over because they're going to have some spring back. You can go up if that one was too large. There you go. So now you have a circular shape with your metal. And I'm going to bring in the nylon jaw pliers and kind of work these paddles so they're laying parallel to each other here. So I, when I cross them over, they're nice and flat against each other. And you can decide which paddle you, uh, which paddle you like on top because they're gonna overlay with this cold connection. And I'm just kind of squeezing. Now I'm going to bring in a ball head pin. And I'm going to insert it through the two holes that we created to secure this connection. And you'll want to make sure that the ball 
is big enough that it will not go through the holes that we created. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this connection and I'm going to lay this wire over to one side here. And I'll bring in the wires here. And I'm going to begin wrapping on the paddle that is underneath the top one along that. You can bring in pliers if you're not comfortable using your fingers here. If you don't feel like you can get it, the wraps tight enough using the strength of your fingers, you can bring in either the chain nose or bent nose to really pull that wire snug. I'll usually start it with my fingers and then I'll bring in the pliers to get the wrap more snug. And I'll go at least three wraps more if I can get it, depending on the length of your, um, your head pin wire. Usually um, you can get three to four wraps. And I am just grabbing this end so I can get it flush against the other metal. Struggling a little bit here. <laughs> that off. Yeah. All right. And I just make sure nothing sharp afterwards. So that is how we are securing this bangle. So now I'm going to bring back the mandrel. And it is this it's a little bit easier to have the metal one at this point because it's tapered. When you're doing this and then I kind of use my fingers. I try to use my fingers as much as possible because the less marring of the metal better. And then I'm just going to use the mallet and I'm going to tap not hard at all around until I have rounded out this bangle. Then I'm going to actually flip it. And I'm going to do it again. Okay. So now we have it rounded out. And then I'm going to bring in the bench block here and flatten it so it's nice and flat. I'm going to avoid the cold connection. I'm going to flip it over. And now this is nice and round and flat. So that is the first sample of the cold connection. A very easy one, quick. Um, this is one that I added a, a daisy spacer to on top. And you can make a nice stack of these. Um, really cute, easy to do, and you have some bangles there. That's the first cold connection. Alrighty, so the second one, I'm not going to waste the time of paddling these out. It's exact same steps as we did with the um, one previous as we paddled out the ends, punched holes in them, and then I'm going to use a flat head pin right here to secure this bead to it. And so I'm going to bring back the wooden mandrel to form this bangle using my fingers again. Move up one step here. Oh. 
same exact steps as the previous one, just a different design way to design it and close it off using some beads. It's giving you more options here. Alrighty, so I'm going to take and thread the bead onto the head pin. And then I'm going to thread the head pin through the holes on the paddles. And I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did with the ball head pin. I'm going to smush that over. And I'm going to begin wrapping. First with my fingers, and then I'll probably bring the pliers in. This is a little bit longer of a um, head pin, so I'm getting more wraps, which I don't mind at all. Bring in the chain nose, get these coils nice and snug against the metal. And I'm going to tighten up this coil. I'm going to take off a little bit of this so I can tuck it in tightly to the wire. So there's no sharp bits. Bring in the steel mandrel to round this out. We are going to use our fingers for the most part just to avoid any kind of connection with with this bead because it's glass bead. And then we'll bring in the mallet and I'm just going to avoid the cold connection with the mallet so it's not hitting the bead. So we do not want to break the bead. Then I'm going to Flip it and do the same. Okay. Well, we rounded it out. And we're going to bring in the bench block and we're going to flatten it. Waiting the bead and the cold connection just by holding it off of the bench block. So now we have a bead accented bangle and add it to the stack. Mine are all different sizes. I'm making some for my granddaughters, some for me, but very cute. You can also add charms to these bracelets with jump rings. So you get a little bit more movement if you choose. Alrighty. So the next one we're going to be doing is this one here. Now, this was made with 16 uh, gauge uh, wire because I was kind of doing some um, trials with different designs, but I'm going to make it with um, 14 gauge because 14 gauge is a much better choice for bangles. It's going to be more hardy because 16 gauge, it will bend. You can see the flex in there when I move it and stuff. So it's okay if you have a lot of them in a stack they'll still get bent out of place and you'll probably have to um intermediate you know straighten them out um every once in a while but i would highly recommend a 14 gauge wire Alrighty, so i cut this about 10 inches because i'm going to use my looping pliers to put a nine millimeter loop on each end of these for my cold connection. So I'm going to start the loop here and I'm going to put it between the two biggest barrels at the end. And then I'm going to use my fingers for the most part to push the wire around the barrel of the pliers. So yeah, and then I'm going to adjust and push it to where the ends of the wires are touching. Then I'm going to come in here with the smallest barrel of the pliers to make my loop. 
just like that. And you can bring the big ones back, but just like that. And I flip it and do the same, making sure the loops are the same on it, laying the same on each side. And I'm going to do opposing openings. So I'm going to, this is going to have the opening down here. And then this one's going to have the opening on this side. So we're going to do the same over here. I'm going to put the wire between the two biggest barrels. And then I'm going to use, ensure my loops are the, going to be in the same direction. And I'm going to use my fingers to push that all the way around the barrel. And then I'll readjust. And then I'm going to bring in the smallest one up against the crook there. And then I'm just going to give it a little bit of a twist. So as you can see, now you have two loops on either side, the opening up top, bottom. I like to do it that way. Um, so if it gets pulled, one it will stay while the other one might open. And you can leave these as is. Um, I did that on the one bracelet here. Um, I flattened these. You can flatten these. Um, but I will leave them as is. And I will bring in the forming mandrel. And I am going to hold the loop flush as I bend with my fingers the wire going to overlap and it'll spring back a little bit. Now you could also do it like that if you wanted to and connect them this way or you can do them this way. And I kind of actually like that. Um, like that. And then I'm going to bring in some jump rings and I'm going to grab my bent nose and my chain nose pliers and I'm going to attach jump rings here, making sure I get them closed up. And you'll want at least an 18 gauge jump ring for this, for the strength. I've been putting three for the connection. You can do two. That two would be fine, too. I'm going to do three just for added strength. And I'm going to close this last one up. And I'm going to bring in a steel mandrel and I'm going to tap just to round it out in case it was deformed a little bit from any of the adjustments I was making. I'm going to flip it and do it again. So now to actually tighten this loop up a little bit too. This one over here. And I'm going to use the motion of how you would open and close a jump ring. Close this up. So now you have These two, and then I did one in brass as well. So, and this is just another design you can do, and you can play with it, do it however you like. And do you remember the heart links uh, that we did for in the tutorial that was Valentine um, inspired? You can do the same. You can use these as your connector between the two. And I will show you how to connect them with the paddles because uh, that'll be on the next one. It's the same exact uh, technique, but you can use this technique to attach all sorts of links and components that you make. 
out of the wire. So the next one I will show you how to make will be, got lots of stuff here on the, um, it's going to be similar to this and this. So you're going to have this paddled portion and it's going to form a hook that is going to be closed in order to um, hold the bangle in place, the connection. So you're going to take another piece of wire and you're going to paddle out each end so, they're, so you're thinning the metal. You're not going to punch a hole in it though this time. You're going to use the looping pliers, the smallest barrel, which I believe it's either two or three. Two and a half, two and a half millimeters. And you're going to place the paddle between the two smallest barrels on the looping pliers, and you're going to leave a little bit sticking out because I don't want a C, I don't want it to close into a C hook. I want it to be more of a flat straight hook. And I there's a reason for that. So we're just gonna curl until we get that flat hook. Now I'm gonna do it to the same side, making sure that we're curling the same direction. So now we have a piece of wire with two straight hooks on either side. Now you can use all kinds of Connections. You can um, build a connection with beads and a wire wrap. You can do an infinity loop, um, which is what I'll do right now to show you how to connect this. This is a infinity that's been paddled flat, and this one is just the way normal. So you're going to cut a two inch piece of 16 gauge wire. We're going to bring back the looping pliers and we're going to use the seven millimeter barrel, which is the second biggest on these. And we're going to place the wire in between the two largest barrels. Flush or as flush as we can. And we're just going to use our fingers to go around to push it, push it until we have loop. So, and then we're going to turn it. And do the same to the other end using the seven millimeter. Just going to use my fingers to push it and readjust and close it and close it. And then I'm going to hammer this one flat just to harden it as well. Chasing hammer. Careful not to smash your fingers. You don't need to do a huge blows, but. We're going to get it flat, do the other side. It will come apart a little bit. You can use some uh, tape, double side tape to hold it down as well. I bring in the looping pliers again. Put the seven millimeter barrel back on to close these up so we can retain the shape as well. And close that up. Now we're going to bring back the wire that we paddled out and hooked. Now I like the hooks to face inward. Um, you can do it, certainly do it either way, but I think it looks nicer to do it um, this way inside. So I'm going to round this out with the hook facing the mandrel. We're just going to Move it down too because we don't need this one to overlap too much. Okay. And then I'm going to slide that on. I'm going to bring in the steel mandrel in order to finish this out. And then bring it down on the mandrel so it's such 
And then we're going to take and push it down so it's firm. And then I'm going to strike those hooks with the mallet. And it's going to close them. And you'll watch it close. Then I'm going to go all the way around. Flip it. Do the same thing. Get the mandrel out. So now we have that, and then I'm going to flatten it, avoiding the cold connection. Flip it. This is probably the connection I use most when I'm doing cold connection break. Um, bangles because it just holds really well and as you can see it seals down really nicely and it holds that component very firmly so now you have and you can close this up too a little bit and you and if you really want to get the angle you can kind of put that in the middle and give it a little bit of a curve So now you'll have a nice curved bangle. And you, like I said, you can use this um, hook um, closure on closing off any kind of element that you want um, to do, such as making the loop like we did when we did this one. Just one and then using the hook, close it. Or if you want to wire wrap some beads or elements, then you can um, do it that way as well. So you'll have all sorts of pretty bangles to add to your stack. The sky is the limit. Now these are the cold connection ones we did in the first and then this is the second one options you can do all sorts of beautiful bangles that you can make using these two connections the bigger the stack the better right you can use sterling copper brass wire um, whatever you choose but I recommend at least a um, 14 gauge wire um, you can intermix some 16 gauge in there, but just know they're not as hardy and they will most likely bend um, with any kind of rough, you know, activities that you may or may not be doing as you're wearing the bangles. So I hope you found these tutorials very useful. I, as I said, I have some more in the works and I wanted to do another shout out. I've had some really helpful comments. Um, that have helped me along the way with making um, uh, jewelry uh, tutorials. So thank you again and have a good rest of your